In recent years, generative adversarial networks, or GANs, have become one of the most exciting advancements in artificial intelligence. It is capable of creating highly realistic images, synthesizing lifelike voices, and even generating entirely new music compositions. But what exactly is a GAN, and how does it work? Let's discuss the basics of GANs, how they operate, their different types, and some exciting use cases. So what is a GAN? A generative adversarial network is a type of neural network architecture that consists of two models working against each other in an adversarial manner. Ian Goodfellow and his collaborators first introduced the GAN framework in 2014, and since then it has revolutionized the field of generative modeling. There are two components in a GAN. One is called the generator, and the other one is called the discriminator. The generator's job is to create fake data that looks like real data. Data. It starts with a random input, often called noise, and transforms it into a data sample, like an image, a piece of music, or text that resembles data from the training set. What is a discriminator? The discriminator acts as a classifier that distinguishes between real data, or samples from the training dataset, and fake data, which are samples created by the generator. The discriminator is trained to identify whether the input data is genuine or generated. These uh, two components, generator and the discriminator, are trained simultaneously in a game-like framework, where they improve by competing with each other, known as adversarial training. Here we have a picture of how GAN works. So the training data are the real samples, and the discriminator is able to distinguish between real samples and fake samples, so it's a classifier. On the other hand, generator is a neural network that can generate fake samples, which are practically generated using some noise. So how does the GAN training work? The training of a GAN can be thought of as a zero-sum game where the generator and the discriminator are playing against each other. In step 1, we train the discriminator neural network, and in step 2, we train the generator neural network. So when we are in step 1, that is when we are training the discriminator, the discriminator is presented with real data from the dataset and fake data generated by the generator. The discriminator learns to classify real data as real and generated data as fake. The discriminator loss is minimized when it correctly distinguishes between real and fake. In step 2, that is during the training of the generator, the generator tries to fool the discriminator by producing more realistic data. The generator's loss is minimized when the discriminator incorrectly classifies generated data as real. The generator learns by using the discriminator's feedback to produce better quality data. These two steps are repeated iteratively, leading to both networks gradually improving, the discriminator becomes better at telling real from fake, and the generator becomes better at producing realistic fake data. Ideally, they reach an equilibrium where the generator's fake data becomes so good that the discriminator cannot reliably distinguish it from real data. Now let's talk about types of GANs. Since their inception, several variants of GANs have been developed to address various challenges and extend their applications. The regular GAN, that is the original GAN architecture, consists of a generator and discriminator trained in the classic adversarial manner that we just discussed. There is another type of GAN which is also a very popular one called conditional GAN or C-GAN. C-GANs add conditional information to both the generator and discriminator, allowing them to generate data conditioned on specific labels, for example, generating images of specific categories such as dogs or cats. 
in ordinary GAN or original GAN. You could train your GAN with training data of dogs, cats, and many other animals. And when you ask to generate an image, it could be any or mix of multiple animals. But in conditional GAN, you can specify from what category or what class level the generator should generate images. Then we also have deep convolutional GAN, DC GAN. DC GANs utilize convolutional layers in the generator and discriminator, making them particularly very powerful for generating realistic images. Then we have WGAN. WGAN addresses some stability issues in training GANs by using a different loss function, making the training more stable and reducing the occurrences of mode collapse. A mode collapse is a problem when the generator produces only a limited variety of outputs. Then there is the cycle GAN. Cycle GANs are designed for unpaired image to image translation tasks. They can, for example, transform photographs into paintings or convert daytime images into nighttime scenes without needing paired training examples. Style GAN is another type of GAN that can do high resolution image synthesis by transferring styles. StyleGAN has been used to generate photorealistic human faces that do not belong to any real individual. There are several challenges in GANs, one of which is instability. GANs are difficult to train because of their adversarial nature. It is hard to reach a point where both networks improve consistently without one getting too far ahead. The second one is mode collapse that we talked about. Mode collapse occurs when the generator learns to produce only a small range of outputs, ignoring much of the diversity present in the real dataset. Essentially, the model collapses to generate a limited set of similar examples. Then there comes vanishing gradients. In this context of GANs, if the discriminator becomes too good too quickly, the generator's gradients can vanish, making it difficult for the generator to learn and improve. Many of these challenges have been addressed by developing GAN variants that we discussed, such as WGAN, for improving stability and techniques like mini-batch discrimination to combat mode collapse. Generative adversarial networks have opened up new frontiers in creative and data-intensive fields. The ability to synthesize high-quality realistic data has applications ranging from entertainment to critical sectors like healthcare and finance. As GANs technology continues to evolve, we are likely to see more refined models that generate even more complex and diverse data with improvements in training stability and efficiency. In the description section, I'll provide a link to a video that demonstrates Python PyTorch coding to create a simple GAN application. Thank you for watching. See you soon in another video.